Curious Kid Cast. Here we go. It's me, Andy, your host on the Curious Kid Cast, where we explore all the wild and wonderful stuff that makes our world so awesome. Today, we're chasing rainbows. Not literally, though. I tried that once and ended up face first in a mud puddle. My mom was not happy about those pants. Have you ever seen a rainbow and just stopped whatever super important thing you were doing, like eating ice cream or avoiding your vegetables, and just stared at it? I mean, it's like this mega explosion of color after it rains, right? It's there one minute and poof, gone the next, like when my little brother realizes it's bath time and mysteriously disappears. Today, we're going to explore the magic of rainbows. We'll look at how they form and what they are exactly. Like, is a rainbow actually a giant's colorful smile? Or maybe it's alien artwork? Spoiler alert, it's science. But don't worry, science can be just as cool as aliens. Almost. We've got tons of rainbow facts that will help us understand this beautiful thing in the sky, and we'll also talk about that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Speaking of which, has anyone ever been to the end of a rainbow? If you have, please call me immediately because one, I have questions, and two, I need to borrow some gold for my next trip to the candy store. That's the big question today, isn't it? Can you actually reach the end of a rainbow? It feels like there should be a real end to it, right? Like, it has to land somewhere. My cousin Jake says he found the end once, but he also claims his sneakers can make him jump over our house, so... Let's start with the super basics of how a rainbow forms. It all starts with sunlight and raindrops. Sunlight is basically doing a little dance party with those raindrops up in the sky. When sunlight, which looks white to our eyes, enters a raindrop, something really cool happens. It bends! This is called refraction, and it's kind of like what happens to me when I smell pizza. I just automatically bend toward it. This bending happens because light travels at different speeds through air and water. The light is taking a detour through the raindrop, like when my mom is driving and suddenly says, Ooh, let's stop at that store. And then once inside the raindrop, the light travels to the back of it and bounces off, kind of like it's hitting a tiny mirror inside. That bouncing back is called reflection. And then as the light exits the raindrop to come back to our eyes, it bends again. Another refraction. So it's like bend, bounce, bend, which coincidentally is also my dance routine at school parties. My teacher says it looks like I'm being attacked by invisible bees. But wait, how does all that bending and bouncing create all those amazing colors? This is where it gets super duper fascinating. That first bending doesn't bend all the colors of sunlight the same amount. What? I know, mind blown already. White light is actually made up of a whole rainbow of colors, like what you see when light shines through a prism or when you hold up a CD in the sunlight, or when my dog Rex drools on the floor and it catches the light just right. The separation of colors is called dispersion, which is a fancy science word that makes you sound really smart at the dinner table. Red light bends a little less while violet light bends a little more, so it's like each raindrop is a tiny prism up in the sky splitting that white light into all those individual colors. It's like each raindrop is a mini DJ mixing up different colors instead of songs. DJ drizzle in the house. The angle at which these separated colors leave the raindrop and travel to your eyes determines what you see. So red light reaches your eyes at a slightly different angle than blue or violet light. Different raindrops are sending different colors to your specific viewpoint, like they're all working together to put on a show just for you. It's like each raindrop is sending you a personalized color message. Hey kid, here's some blue for you, and here's some red. Enjoy! So it's not like the rainbow is one big arc with colors painted on it. Each little raindrop is adding its own color to the mix. It's the biggest team project in the sky. Here's something that'll make your brain do a cartwheel. If each raindrop is doing its own thing, does that mean everyone sees a slightly different rainbow? Yes, the rainbow you see is totally unique to you. It's like having your own personal rainbow ID card. A rainbow's appearance depends on the exact angle between the sun, the raindrops, and your eyeballs. 
Even a tiny shift in your position means you're seeing light reflecting from a completely different set of raindrops. Someone standing right next to you will see their own personal light show. It's like everyone gets their own rainbow channel and no sharing required. And if everyone's seeing their own rainbow, then it would be impossible to reach the same end. The idea of an endpoint comes from how we see the rainbow from the ground, like it's meeting the horizon. But as you move toward that spot, the whole rainbow moves too. It's like trying to catch your shadow. Or like trying to catch my dog when it's bath time. The closer you get, the faster he runs away. So even if you could run super duper fast toward the end of the rainbow or ride your bike or convince your parents to drive you there, you'd just be seeing a new rainbow form further away. You'd never actually get there. It's the ultimate game of tag where you're always it. Want to hear something even more bonkers? Rainbows are actually full circles. What? I know. We usually only see an arc because the ground gets in the way of the bottom half. But if you're high up in an airplane and there's no ground blocking your view, you can see the whole rainbow circle. It's like finding out your half cookie is actually a whole cookie. Best day ever. So the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, it's really just a story. Kind of like when my dad tells me that vegetables will give me superpowers. Still waiting on those, by the way? Even though we know it's not a real place, the idea of the end of the rainbow is still a powerful symbol. It represents our hopes and dreams, those things we strive for even if they seem just out of reach. Like me trying to reach the cookie jar on the top shelf, or trying to stay awake until midnight on New Year's Eve. Maybe the real treasure isn't about reaching the end, but about the journey itself. You know, the striving and the dreaming. That's what my grandma says when we get lost on road trips anyway. So even though we've figured out how rainbows work with all this science stuff, they still feel magical, don't they? Knowing how it works actually makes it even more amazing. It's like finding out how a magician does a trick, but still going, whoa, when you see it happen. The big takeaway here is that you can't reach the end of a rainbow because it's not a fixed place. It's an experience unique to you and how you see the light. It's your very own sky spectacle. So to wrap up this rainbow adventure, I want to leave you with this thought. What other things in the world seem magical but have a scientific explanation? And how does knowing that explanation change the way you see them? Does knowing how a rainbow works make it less special or more special? Also, what other impossible goals do we chase? Like trying to lick your elbow seriously, don't hurt yourself trying, or trying to convince your parents that ice cream is a breakfast food. How do those chases shape who we are? Something to think about until next time. This is Andy signing off from the Curious Kid Cast. Keep looking up at the sky, keep asking questions, and remember, just because you can't catch a rainbow doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Who knows what amazing things you'll discover along the way? And maybe bring an umbrella, because, you know, raindrops. Hey, let your question